Hey guys, how you doing? Luna here with a new video. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a good old fashioned review. I'm lucky enough to be reviewing the latest album by the super talented singer, songwriter, producer Taylor Swift and her tortured poets department. Being her 11th studio release, this album was met with really high expectations, not only because of the massive success of her previous record Midnight's, but also because of how profitable and successful the Eras tour was, going over the billion dollar mark, I think. Also, the fact that a lot of people thought that this was going to be a concept album supported by the title of the record and the you know the whole static of the promotion um, me personally i wasn't really too excited mainly because of how disappointing and underwhelming midnight's was for me especially after the folklore and evermore run which in my opinion are her best albums i was really disappointed to see that she was going back to the 1989 sound this time with a little you know with a more minimalistic approach talking about karma again fellow relationships and ex-boyfriends i wasn't really too into that uh, back in the day when she was doing red in 1989 and you you know the her country era at the beginning of her career it was more relatable overall you know listening to a 20 year old that was heartbroken at the time sing about toxic relationships was way more believable than listening to 34 year old taylor swift in a relationship talk about the same topic this time around kind of romanticizing the whole thing and i'll get to that in a minute because this album is just basically Midnight's 2.0, and I know a lot of people disagree with me, a lot of people will say that I'm just hating, but I would like to say that I am a really big Taylor Swift fan, you know, Red, 1989, Folklore, and Evermore, in my opinion, are some of the greatest albums from the last decades, I really truly enjoy those records. The intimacy and vulnerability behind Folklore is something that I go back to really often, which is the reason why I don't really understand why she would try to go back to the 1989 sound, this time with a more minimalistic approach that tries to drive all the focus from the instrumental palette to the narrative but the narrative is the same thing we've been hearing from taylor swift ever since she released her first album it's about failed relationships if it's about toxic relationships it's about the fact that you kind of enjoy the toxicity in this relationship to the point where you don't which is why i never really felt related or i don't really empathize with a lot of the lyrics from this album and a lot of her previous albums like reputation and lover because it seems like she enjoys this sort of toxic environment in the relationship like I don't want to listen to this shit over and over again which is the reason why I was kind of hoping that Taylor because of the title you know because of the static of this whole thing because of the poem she posted on Instagram I was hoping that this was going to be a concept album because Taylor Swift is a great storyteller like she has amazing storytelling abilities the way that she paints scenarios with such a level of precision that you know exactly what's going on you know how she feels you know how the other person feels it's like she is so good at showing you a picture and telling you this is exactly how things are happening in my head. It's an ability that a lot of mainstream and underground artists don't have. You know, people are often really vague when it comes to describing scenarios or feelings or, you know, thoughts. Taylor Swift, on the other hand, is amazing at storytelling, which is the reason why I'm so frustrated when her storytelling abilities are kind of caged in heartbreak and loss and toxicity instead of going for other more interesting feelings like rage, like happiness, like, I don't know, maybe a concept of a story that you made up. There are so many many more options for uh, songwriting narratives and you just go for the same thing you have been doing for the past almost 20 years. And back then, at least you can understand what she was talking about without, you know, researching her entire life. But right now, it feels like you have to be deep in Taylor's lore to understand a lot of these songs. For example, this entire album or a vast majority of it is dedicated to her relationship with Matthew Healy from the 1975, even which is kind of weird considering she is in a relationship with a different dude right now. You know, I don't know how I would feel if I had a girlfriend and she was making a song or an entire album about the past relationship she had with this dude and a lot of the comments she makes about Matthew Healy are really positive too I don't know it's I think it's kind of weird there's so many similes and references and metaphors in this album that literally any normal human being that just enjoys music for the sake of enjoying music is not going to understand a lot of these things and in between this lore dumps that she has in every single one of these songs she has these weird ass lines like we both declare that Charlie Puth should be a bigger artist like I literally laughed out loud when I heard this for the first time because it's such an out of context line you know it's almost like we're putting ads in the middle of the songs Charlie Puth wired $20,000 to Taylor Swift and she put a little ad into one of her songs you know that's what we're doing now 
Now, not enjoying the lyrical narrative that this album has is one thing, you know, you still have the entire rest of the album to enjoy, like the sound palette, the performance, and all these different things that make a good album. But the problem is that none of those other things are enjoyable either, because first of all, the production is very minimalistic, pretty much the same as Midnight's, but this time even more low key. But not minimalistic like in Folklore and Evermore, you know, that's indie folk, it's a totally different type of instrumental palette. And here is still pop music, it's just really uninteresting, you know, it kind of shifts the focus to the performance and the songwriting and the whole story that Taylor is trying to tell. If you put too many sounds and instruments in the mix, yeah, a lot of people are going to focus on that and not on the narrative of the song, which is not exactly what Taylor wanted for this album, I guess. The problem is that the narrative is not interesting and the instrumentation is not interesting, so you're left with nothing. And a lot of people say, well, what about the performance? It's pretty much the same thing as always. Taylor Swift has never been that impressive as a performer. From, you know, the very first album had some impressive lines, especially when it comes to Red, has some really good um, vocal performance performances like State of Grace for example is one of my favorite. Red is also really good. I Knew You Were Trouble in, in my opinion is interesting. You know it was a different approach to the usual performance she had in her previous records and it kind of hinted towards the pop future of her discography. But I believe that we shouldn't criticize the fact that the performance isn't all that great and the you know the instrumentation isn't all that great because I think that was kind of like the point. I believe that Taylor wanted people to focus on the narrative that she was trying to communicate on this album, on the storytelling, on you know the references sense in the metaphors and I'm pretty sure that this album will be really enjoyable to many of her fans that are really invested in her own private life that's not private anymore apparently and want to listen to all these tea you know it seems like every time she releases an album it's more about the things that she's going to say rather than the actual music. Now I've been really harsh on this album I know that but there are a few songs that I do enjoy My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys for example would be one of them. I love how convincing and how committed she sounds to the narrative how is a song about how toxic a relationship can get and you kind of enjoy the fact that it's toxic. But it's an interesting song with a catchy melody, so I think you should check it out. Then you have probably my favorite song on this album, Down Bad. I know a lot of people don't really like the lyrical concept here, but again, it's not about the content of the lyrics. It's about how committed and how convincing you sound when it comes to performing it. I think the melody is catchy as hell. I love the instrumentation, even though, again, very minimalistic, but I think it goes well with uh, her performance. It's the same old story about being in love with a guy, and this guy's not good for you. He breaks up with you. He destroys you. You're the but you still love him because he's the one you want, you know, how original, who would have thought that Taylor would sing about something like this? Which leads me to the next track I really did enjoy, uh, Who's Afraid of Little Old Me? And I know that a lot of people have been criticizing her on TikTok and on Twitter because of what she said in this song. You wouldn't last an hour in the asylum that they raised me. I know how a lot of people can be infuriated by this lyric because it's it's just really out of touch. You know, we're living in a society where a lot of people are just living paycheck to paycheck, working two jobs, 80 hours a week, you know, renting an apartment with four other dudes so listening to Taylor Swift singing about how hard her life was even though he was incredibly privileged from a really young age. I know how you can be annoyed by this sort of lyrics but honestly the fact that your life is a little bit harder than the next guy's doesn't really mean that he doesn't have a right to complain and honestly growing up a 16 year old being sexualized by the entire industry and being you know exposed to the whole world at such a young age when you're going through a lot of changes you're going through your first relationships you know you're going through a lot of things I, I don't think it was easy either so I understand what she's talking about on this song even if I know that the delivery wasn't like it wasn't that great other than those songs I just mentioned, I think that the only other one that I can rescue is Love of My Life, which in my opinion, the simplicity of the track really helped Taylor's performance. In my opinion, the most well-performed track in the entire album. Every other song in here is just insufferable in my opinion. Boring, the lyrical concept is not good, and the fact that the instrumental and the performance kind of shift your focus to the lyrical concept doesn't really help the album at all, which is the reason why, in my opinion, songs like But Daddy I Love Him, So Long London, in with that weird choir segment at the beginning of the track that does nothing for the track overall because they changed to a completely different instrumental and performance style. So what was the point of that intro? I don't know. I can do it with a broken heart and the alchemy have some of the most boring production in the entire album. And then you have tracks like Florida. I, I don't even know what the fuck that track is. I don't know why she thought it was a good idea to include a song like that in an album like this. You know, I, 
I kind of understand and can relate to what she was saying. Like, my friends either smell like weed or babies. I, I can understand that because I have friends that are like 40 and are living a married, happy life. And then I have friends who are in their 20s who are getting high and going to bars almost every night. I know what she was talking about, but that doesn't really mean that I enjoy the track at all because it's just one line that's relatable and then the entirety of the rest of that track is just like a weird tourist idea of what Florida actually is. I live in Florida and I don't know what she was talking about. Once you're done with the hour this album lasts, two hours if you're listening to the deluxe edition, you're left with a bunch of stationary synths over generic drum patterns, really bland vocal performance that don't really showcase uh, Taylor's talent as a singer at all, and some lyrical concepts that are go from toxicity to heartbreak to falling in love with the wrong guy, which has a same thing we've been hearing from Taylor Swift ever since her very first album. This time, uh, you know, it kind of feels like she's romanticizing the whole thing because it's been so long and we've seen no progress when it comes to her ability to build relationships. You know, it's just incredible. But that's her life. I don't really care. From the listener's perspective, it sounds boring. The fact that you have to be going through a certain situation to enjoy a lot of the lyrics in this album don't really help the record at all. A lot of us are not going through a breakup. A lot of us, you know, haven't been in a toxic relationship for years so we don't really know what to make of this album it's just one big mystery which is the reason why i can confidently say that this album is worse than midnight's and it's definitely the worst album by taylor swift so far folklore and evermore had more interesting narratives and that's the reason why even though the instrumentation is relatively similar to that of this album i enjoyed those albums a lot because it was more interesting for me to listen what she was talking about also the fact that her songwriting skills were on point a lot of the melodies on that album were pretty memorable for me especially in songs like Cardigan and the last uh, Great American Dynasty, for example. But a lot of the lyrics from this album, I don't remember even though I spent the last six hours of my day listening to the deluxe edition of this record. So that can say a lot about the level of quality that this album have and how catchy a lot of the songs in this album are. So while you do have a few good songs and a bunch of catchy tunes here and there, for the vast majority of this album, it's just pure boredom and not anything new from Taylor, you know? And I guess that if you're a girl in your 20s, and you've been in a toxic relationship or are in a toxic relationship, you're going to enjoy a lot of the songs in this album and are going to feel related to what she's saying. But uh, the rest of us are not really, don't really know what to make of this album, which is a reason why I'll say it once more. This is her worst album by far. However, this is only my personal opinion. So if you have your own, and I'm pretty sure you do, you can go ahead and leave it down below in the comments and I'll make sure to check it out and give you my opinion on your opinion so we can have a civilized conversation in the comments section because we all know that Taylor Swift fans know how to know how to be civilized when it comes to accepting criticism i really do hope you guys enjoyed this review if you did go ahead and leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any other videos that i upload if you want me to make any other videos on any other artist songs or albums go ahead and leave it down below as well and i'll make sure to fulfill your request as soon as i can once again i hope that you enjoyed and i hope that i can see you soon with a new video but until then bye